So today I want to talk to you about blood sugar balance, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, fatiguing after meals, um, getting hangry, uh, feeling like you need to sleep, and uh, sometimes even getting energized by meals because your blood sugar goes too low. So somewhere along that continuum, you are dealing with blood sugar spikes or blood sugar drops that don't stay normal. And, and this is impacting your energy levels. And a lot of the times it's impacting your ability to handle stress and you crash in the middle of the day, you don't handle stressors very well, maybe you're in over sympathetic mode where you're anxious and you feel panicky, your circadian rhythm is broken and doctors are telling you that you're normal and there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. So where adrenal fatigue gets its bad rap is when um, doctors just throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that the adrenals, unless they're insufficient, meaning you have an autoimmunity and you have Addison's, they're always going to produce an amount of cortisol that is not defined as a fatigue problem. The problem with that is, is that so many other things can go wrong and do go wrong in terms of handling your stress, having enough energy balancing your blood sugar, controlling your inflammation, having enough raw materials to produce energy, making neurons, repairing, regenerating, detoxifying, clearing out, recycling. All those things can go wrong still, um, but when you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater saying there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue, then you have a major problem with your doctor. But I wanna talk to you about blood sugar balance, and I went to see Dr. Robert Lustig speak the other day, and he had an amazing, amazing presentation that I wanna share with you that information, because it's gonna be, eye-opening for you and so basically a lot of people will say with metabolic syndrome it's just you just don't have to stop eating so much and if you weren't obese then you wouldn't have a problem with your blood sugar being unbalanced and his research has really found that may be true for people that are morbidly obese it's not true for people that all people that are obese and let alone not everyone that is obese still has metabolic problems. So if it was just a matter of your body fat and being too, having too much body fat leading to your metabolic issues and your insulin resistance and in part your energy production, then we wouldn't have any skinny people with metabolic issues. So he made an amazing study and said that Pretty much now 30% of Americans are obese, which means 70% of Americans aren't. He also then went to say of those 30% that are obese, 80% of them have a, or I think it was 70%, maybe 80%, 80% of the 30% have metabolic issues, meaning insulin resistance, high triglycerides, fatty liver, um, health related problems, increase in morbidity and mortality, and just not doing well. Um, however, the interesting thing was of the 70% that wasn't obese, 40% of them have insulin problems. So how again can that be? So what's the common denominator? And that's what really is enlightening for me, and it's gonna be enlightening for you. So really what was really interesting is, is that there's a difference. You may have heard Dr. Berg talk about um, the pears versus the apples. And the apples are the ones that have the, the visceral body fat. It's you know protruding, it's that proverbial beer belly. You see people like this nowadays with really skinny limbs, skinny arms, skinny legs, but this just big barrel belly. Um, and that would be considered visceral fat, the apples. And then you have the pears, although it may not look nice, you have the subcutaneous fat. And that subcutaneous fat is around the midsection and um, they are defined as pears. Now what his research team has found out is, is that the apples are infinitely more unhealthy than the pears. The apples are infinitely more unhealthy than the pears. And wh why that is, is because that 
visceral fat, the fat that is protruding in the abdomen that's covering your viscera, goes directly to the liver for portal circulation. In English meaning it doesn't get filtered, it overloads the liver with um, fatty, fatty substances or, or glucose that converts into stored fat. Now, you're supposed to you're supposed to store glucose in the liver, it's called glycogen, but you're not supposed to store fat in the liver, it's called fatty liver. And when you have apples that are con having a lot of visceral fat, that visceral fat goes directly to the portal circulation and ultimately causes sugar to convert into fat, causes protein to convert into fat, and causes fat to already stay into fat. And, and this is where you have people that have metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance or major problems with blood sugar versus those that have subcutaneous fat, even though it doesn't look pretty. Um, it goes through the superior and inferior vena cava. It goes through the systemic blood supply and then ultimately goes to the liver. And those people don't have the morbidity and the mortality and the major problems of metabolic syndrome that those that have the visceral fat have. Hopefully that made a lot of sense to you and lots of, lots, at least in my mind, a lot of flags were going off. So what is it about the visceral fat versus the subcutaneous fat that is so problematic and ultimately it's the fructose and it's the glucose and and we are not designed to have so much refined sugars in our diet in fact his team did a study of uh, a poor socioeconomic group in his in i think it's his part of northern california and all they did was swap out the refined sugars for complex sugars and found that a lot of the biomarkers that increased the production of vldl which is basically your liver's way of of saying you got too much sugar and it's being converted into fat whether it's from sugar protein or fats and this is going to cause metabolic syndrome. So the take home message in all of this is be a don't be a pear, but be a pear more than be an apple. And most importantly, don't eat any refined sugars. I mean, it can be that easy. So where do we get our refined sugars? I mean, refined sugars, and I'm sorry to yell at you, but who in the year 2020 still drinks soda? I mean, get off of it. I mean, I think the fructose, fructose concentration in one bottle of soda or one can of pop is is more than your liver can ex, it can deal with and that's going to cause that visceral fat and that fatty liver um, any sugary sweets that's going to overload that as well so just switch out your refined carbs for for processed carbs or even carbs that are more complex Yes, it's not good to have those either, um, but infinitely better than the refined sugars that are overloading your, your portal circulation and your fatty liver. Um, very, very important, it's very aha stuff. Um, then of course you wanna get good healthy grains um, that aren't gonna be antigenic, meaning it's not gonna stimulate an immune response, but more importantly, you want good healthy fl flora and good healthy fiber and good healthy complex array of different fibers to help your microbiome really deal with that extra fibrous carbohydrates that are going to help with your energy production. So hopefully that made a lot of sense to you. And I thought it was really amazing. So this kind of comes down to metabolic issues. And that can cause an issue with if you're not getting um, sugar into your cells because you've developed metabolic syndrome and you're insulin resistant and you're exhausted and tired. What are you doing is you're constantly eating and you're saying, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I don't have enough energy. I'm going to eat um, as much food food as I can because I'm tired and I need to eat every couple hours otherwise my blood sugar falls too low and really your blood sugar is not falling too low your 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 glucose concentration inside the cell may be low 
but your blood sugar is high, and that's causing high cholesterol, high triglycerides, high LDL, crashing in the middle of the day, and you're going on statins thinking that you're going to fix this problem, and it's not going to work. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. Um, I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and if you have any questions for me, then just make sure you DM me, you like, you share, you comment, you subscribe, and most importantly, you learn to control your insulin resistance. Take care and have an awesome day.